they're not motivated by finances, they don't belong in my business. The funny thing about humans is that we're not motivated by just one factor. And most businesses need to understand this. One thing that I learned running a seven figure sales team all before I turned 25 years old is that in order to have the highest return on investment on your employees, you need to understand the seven contributing factors to motivation for those employees. In today's video, I'm gonna be going over each of those contributing factors and I will also explain which of those factors most businesses only know how to pull on. So to begin, let's start on the very end. So what is the number one thing that most businesses pull on to motivate their employees? Simple, it's finance. They believe that if they pay their employees more, they are going to get a higher return on their employees. The thing here though is, those employees don't necessarily provide the highest return. You can pay someone $100,000 per day, but if they're miserable at their job, they're not going to perform at the highest standard. So how can you get this employee motivated if they're not motivated by finances? A lot of businesses, they look at it and they go, well, if they're not motivated by finances, they don't belong in my business. If they're not motivated by the ability to make six to seven figures on a daily, monthly, weekly basis, they shouldn't be here. And although those are valid, arguments they're not going to bring your business to the next level by thinking that way so here are the seven pillars of employee engagement that you can start capitalizing on today to get the best return on investment from your employees number one autonomy provide your employees enough space to do their job don't micromanage them don't be behind them every step of the way breathing down their neck going hey is that project done yet hey i need this done by 3 p.m let them do their job let them breathe to do their job. Let, allow them to make mistakes at their job and allow them to come to you for questions about their role. Don't go to them and force them to handhold them and never let go of the reins. This is a big problem that most business owners have at the beginning stages of their business. They want to control everything. But in order to be a real business owner and not someone who owns a job, you need to be able to let go of those reins and you need to be able to trust those people that you hired that they'll be doing the job that you paid them to do. So again, provide your employees with enough autonomy to do the job as successful as they can and provide feedback when possible, not all the time, every time. The second pillar is mastery. So what is mastery to begin with? Well, mastery is the ability and knowledge that the employee knows that what they do on a day-to-day -day basis, they are the best at it in your company. They have confidence going into any room and any conversation that they know what they're talking about, about their product, their service, or their offer in the marketplace. And the only way for them to feel that way is if you give them enough autonomy. See how it kind of ties all together by providing your employees autonomy they'll feel like they have mastery down packed as well. And if they have those two things along with financials, now you have three out of the seven pillars for high employee engagement. The third factor is recognition. So with recognition, this is something that most businesses tend to do at the very beginning of an employee's employment. They tend to tell everyone about how great this employee is. They praise this employee in public and let them know how fantastic they are at their job. And they make this employee feel fantastic within the first 90 days but then after that, it falls off the side. They don't get enough recognition. They stop providing this employee a platform to shine, to showcase the things that they've done. Most businesses tend to forget about this employee that started 90 days ago to focus on the new one and on the new one and on the new one. And although there, again, there are some arguments as to why you need to do that, you can't forget about the employee who started off with your business 90 days ago. You boasted and bragged about how fantastic they are. And now they're just like a toy that you shunned away in the very corner of your room thinking, ah, I've already given them enough recognition. For your employees to keep performing, they need to feel like they're recognized for the work that they've done for your company. The fourth item here is purpose. So do they know why they're doing the things that they're doing? A lot of businesses, they get their employees to do a certain task and they say, hey, just do this. And if your employee has no purpose when they're doing the things that they're doing, guess what happens? They just autonomously do it. They clock in, they clock out, they have no passion, they don't go above and beyond. And the reason why they don't go above and beyond is because they don't understand the contributing factors as to why that role is important for the overall growth of the economy, the business, the role, whatever it may be. So provide your employees with a purpose. A tip to do this is by letting the employees know that, hey, if we hit XYZ metrics at your job, 
we're able to provide a promotion. We're able to expand. We're able to buy a new location. We're able to do X, Y, Z. Now your employee has a purpose and a goal to work for. Remember, unclear goals leads to unclear expectations, leads to everyone just failing. So make it as clear as can be what the purpose of your employee there is, what the purpose of their role is, and where do you expect that role to be in the next one, three, five years, or however long they decide to stay with your company. So always have a progression plan for them and a purpose for their role in your organization. Again, not just for today, but for the future as well. Number six is obviously relationship. Imagine spending a majority of your waking day with people that you don't like. So with that being said, you need to be able to build enough of a relationship with your employee that they like you enough to contribute to your business. Here's one thing that I found working in different organizations. Managers and business owners who have good relationships with their employees, not friendly relationships, but good relationships where the employee respects the business, respects the outcome and respects the goal, tend to perform with more passion, tenacity and intensity than employees who don't really necessarily like their manager. So be a likable manager, be normal, be human, understand that your employees also have a life outside of work and let them know that. Appreciate them for coming to work for you. Appreciate them for all the things that they've done to you and build a real relationship, a working relationship with your employees. And the last factor to high employee engagement is obviously money. So with finances, are you paying your employees enough or are you being cheap? A lot of businesses like to cheap out on their employees. They think they can penny pinch by not providing a raise at the end of the year. They think they can penny pinch by not being aggressive in the marketplace. But here's the thing. If you don't pay your employees properly, if you don't pay your employees at marketplace value, they're going to eventually run out of finances themselves and look at different opportunities. They're going to look at the competitor. They're going to look at someone who could pay them a bit more. And if you don't understand or know how to pay your employees properly, send me an email below and someone from my team will reach out to your team to discuss how we can fix this problem in your business today. Because obviously if you're not paying your employees enough and you don't think you have enough money to pay your employees, they're going to leave and it's going to cost you more money to replace that employee with someone who can perform the same way as that employee. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.